Okay, so I'm making another Will Solis rant because I feel like it. Also, because I was making a different rant and I realised how long I was going on about Will for, so I thought, why not just make a rant completely about him again? Because you want to, and you know you do. So, like the title said, I have to talk quietly because it's like 11 o'clock at night. So, like the title says, Will's not mischaracterised, or whatever, I made the title, it's something similar to that. But I don't think Will Solis is t mischaracterised, I just think he was over exaggerated I think is the best way of putting it so my points are gonna be jumbled because it's me talking and I don't I don't script these I don't bother so that's why I they're always a bit confusing and that's why I have to clarify stuff but I don't mind doing that I like doing that just remember I have college so if I don't reply to you that's why okay so we're gonna go and order the books but I might have to flip flop back and forth because it, it'll depend the only thing I'm not gonna do yet is do the last Olympian because first of all it's Will's first appearance and second and even though he doesn't do much there's something important in it that I feel like you need to remember so I'm going to leave that to last well maybe last-ish okay so we'll start with the lost hero so in the lost hero Will is introduced with Leo I think that comes first I think that comes before the chariot so Will is the one assigned to take Leo to the Hephaestus cavern. Now please forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce that name. So, in that book, Will gets agitated very easily. Now I know the whole point of Leo is to explain that his jokes don't hit, no one really laughs at them. But the thing is, if Will was characterised at this point to what he is today, he would have laughed. Will would have given at least a pity laugh because that's what he does. So this shows that from the first book that Will was kind of more in, he doesn't really have a character so he must not have really been planned to have one. Especially since this is the only book he appears in for the first four. So I don't think he was really planned on coming back and if he was that wasn't well portrayed. But in The Lost Hero, Will is easily agitated and he gets annoyed quite easily at pretty much every joke or comment uh, Leo makes. I might stir my words, I might say it with the wrong name, forgive me. But the thing is, there's one comment that Leo makes that's not a joke and it's just kind of a way of talking. Now again, I don't know the quotes exactly, so forgive me if I get them wrong, but I know the general idea of it. So Leo makes a comment about Will having a a bow and arrow or just a bow or whatever and he says he calls him an archer dude or something and will gives leo a face from what i can remember he like raises an eyebrow or something like that i could just check the book but i'm not reading all the pages for that and i'm not downloading a pdf so the thing with that is there's no reason for will to do that because leo just pointed something out it's not like he made a stupid joke or anything he just called him an archer dude now you could be like <laughs> See, this is me digging a bit, but you could be like, well, maybe he's just holding that bow because Michael just died. Now, that could, that's again just me reaching it, but, but that's where the headcanon thing comes in, especially for me, because I'm one of the worst when it comes to this. You can see my channel. But Will doesn't have enough of a character to care a lot. And I've said this, Will was not a character that had any importance at all, like, throughout most of the series. So a lot of people had to make stuff up and a lot of those things were held on to because, you know, we never thought much would come of Will. He's always been this little fun little mannequin to play with, I suppose. But the thing is, in The Lost Hero, as I said, Will was easily agitated. He got annoyed easily, especially by Leo. And then when it came to Annabeth and the Chariot, of course he was going to get mad at her. He let her borrow this thing that he probably shouldn't have and she went and destroyed it. But the thing is, Will, again, current Will wouldn't even really care that much. He'd just make sure Annabeth was alright. He wouldn't really care about the chariot. So, like I said, Will was easily agitated in this book and that might relate to Michael just being dead. But again, I can't specifically say that because I don't think Rick thought that. So what's the point? But yeah, Will was easily agitated in The Lost Hero. I think that's the best thing to say. The, the the key letter for The Lost Hero was A, agitated, annoyed, you know, stuff like that. So that's The Lost Hero. And then next he appears again in Blood of Olympus. Now, I gotta be careful here because I could go on and on and on and on and this could be like an hour long rant. Which I could very much do. If you guys want an hour long rant, let me know and I'll do an hour long rant. I could go on for yonks about, about Will. But... 
in Blood of Olympus, Will isn't really A anymore. If I say A, I mean agitated and annoyed. Will isn't really A anymore because he's more it's not that that characteristic is gone it's just not as persistent now the thing is nico describes will with words right so it's not just like he does this he does that figure it out he's quite literally labeled so in this dream nico has will's laid back he's described as like a lanky cat so um now obviously i have bias because i love cats <laughs> and i have two but one of them actually is extremely like chilled out. He lays in the sun and then the other is the opposite. So the thing is, Nico perceived Will as this kind of laid back guy. And it's not that he's not, but that's not something you see much in Blood of Olympus. Just remember laid back. So, so far we've gotten the letter A and the letter L. Just remember the first letter of each word. If there's words that are similar, it's just the category, but some of them are just like one word. So A is like annoyed and agitated, L is laid back. So, then Nico sees Will. Now, the easiest way to find this chapter is when Nico will start talking about an SUV. And when he starts talking about said SUV, Will's guaranteed to show up in the next couple of pages. I just remember that. Now, there are obviously chapters where they talk about an SUV before. But it's you'll know it's not that because of how early it is. So, if you want to read this for yourself, just look for SUV and then Will should show up eventually in a couple of pages. So, Nico had this view of Will as being laid back and very chill and nonchalant stuff like that and then when he meets him he kind of ch changes his mind in a sense he says it's not that Will isn't these things it's just that he doesn't show that a lot it's just he was relaxed when he was with other people when it was just him Llewellyn and Cecile he was different because he was pushy and kind of jokey but here's the thing, if Will was similar to the way he was in Lost Hero, when Nico gave him this attitude that he was giving him, Will would have like spit it right back in Nico's face. He would have been like, he would have complained because he did that a lot. He had, he, Will used facial expressions to complain. But he didn't really do that in Blood of Olympus. He kind of just, the closest thing we got was the eye contact they did. Will does use physical touch a lot. That is something he does in Blood of Olympus. But he didn't do that in The Lost Heroes. So, so far what I'm trying to say is these two, we have like kind of two different characters who you could link together, but they aren't extremely similar, especially since Nico describes Will as laid back to start with, which is like the complete opposite of what he was in. Well, not the complete opposite, but it was very different from what he was in The Lost Hero. Okay, and then next we have Trials of Apollo, which is where Will starts to become a character. And obviously it's more similar to Blood of Olympus. And it's kind of like the lost hero, Will, is kind of thrown out the window. He's nothing, he's really nothing like that. Of course, there's the cringe scene where Will fucking opens the door and is like, no one hits my boyfriend and my dad or whatever, right? I can't read that. I think it's extremely cringy. So it's not that Will doesn't have an angry bone in his body. That's not correct. But... You need to really push him for him to do, to to really, you know, get angry. But I need you to keep in mind, and this is when the, uh, the last Olympian will come in. I'm not going to make my point now, but they will relate. So in the first book, The Hidden Oracle, Will's extremely chill going. He doesn't really ever complain much until Kayla and Austin go missing, but even then... He does raise his voice, but he, he he explains himself. He doesn't just make faces and then hope and just, you know, leave people without thinking. He does explain himself. So that's still different to The Lost Hero. So my point, the thing is, think of The Lost Hero as Will going through something after his brother died. Now, of course, that's not canon, but I'm just saying that's the easiest way to remember it. So in the first book, Will's very jokey. He is kind of what Leo is. And then I've made a video about how similar I think they really are. Now, of course, it is somewhat headcanon, but I do think they're similar in the way that they make a lot of jokes. Now, of course, one of them is more self-deprecating than the other. But I think if you watch the video, and I think I might have explained it, I might post, if I didn't, I'll post a comment on that video about what I'm talking about. But I think I should have explained myself, especially in the description. But my point is, Will and Nico, well, not Will and Nico, Will and Leo were extremely similar in a sense. So the way Will acted in Trials of Apollo reminded me somewhat of Leo. 
so Trials of Apollo, especially with the first book, The Hidden Oracle, Will's just kind of in and out. He's not there the whole time, which I think he should have been, but that's just me. And that also goes for Kayla and Austin, not just Will. But Will's in and out. He's more jokey. He's chill. He's relaxed, okay? So the two perceptions we have so or the three perceptions more like are in the last hero he's agitated he's the ace he's agitated and annoyed in the blood of olympus he's he's described as laid back but nico kind of retracts that statement and and will's more pushy and you know observant but he's also more he's not as harsh as he was and then in trials of apollo it relates more to Blood of Olympus, but there's a progression. If you've noticed, there's a progression. At f in The Lost Hero, he's he has an attitude, he gets annoyed. And then in The Blood of Olympus, he still has that, but it's not as prevalent. And then once we get to Trials of Apollo, he's it's not there anymore. Of course, it still comes out at times, but it's not the focus anymore. So it's not like Will's not a character. He's had this progression, but the thing is, it's always been linear, and I don't think people are recognizing that. Will's never been this weird character who's one way one day and one way another. He is the same character. It's just difficult to understand and remember because of how many books come between it. Now, this is the main point I wanted to make, and I think this is important. People characterized Will as not being extremely violent. Of course, he's not an extremely violent character. But people got confused, and some of them got annoyed, when Will said that he was against violence, and he kind of got upset at Octavian's death because of a comment he made in Blood of Olympus. Now, I don't, again, I don't know the quote exactly, but it was something like, I wish I was a better archer so I could snipe that... Roman its sibling roaming relative something like that off of his high horse or whatever it's something it said something of that, like that now people thought and I did too I will admit I did too a lot of people thought that this was Will being a bit violent I suppose because you know he made a joke about you know it kind of sounded like he made a joke about shooting up <laughs> Octavian with an arrow right but I don't think I think we took that a little bit too literally. Now, of course, it could be a joke, and I'm the idiot here. I I do think I have something that makes me not realise what people are talking about, so please forgive me for that. But a lot of people did seem to think that, well, wasn't this just sunshine, rainbows kind of guy, right? And he's not. He's definitely not that. But I think a lot of people didn't want him to be the stereotypical child of Apollo that he kind of became. But that's another point that I'll bring back up, okay? All right, so now I can talk about The Last Olympian because it relates more to my point now. So in The Last Olympian, Will is 12 years old, so he does have a more childlike mindset. Now, of course, he isn't canonically 12 years old, but Nico was 12, which means Will was in around that age. He was 12 or 13. So Will specifically says that he would never steal. And of course, this is easy to remember because he says that and then the Cecile twins said they would. So... Will doesn't steal, and even when the Cecile twins offered to steal for him, Will still made sure they try. They gave him whatever they could. Will has never been this like child who's been like bad. He's never done anything bad before. The worst thing he did was just have a bit of an attitude in the Lost Hero. But the thing is, Will's been kind of passive since I think fat passive is the right word. It might be like kind hearted, that's more better. Will's always been like this kind of sweet character since the start. And of course, there, you can easily say that Will wasn't supposed to be, but he really definitely wasn't meant to become this massive character. He was definitely just name dropped for the sake of it. But the thing is, Will hasn't really changed that much in terms of the last Olympian. The biggest jump was the attitude he had that I stated in The Lost Hero, but like I said, that could just be a mourning thing for him. So, I never understood where people got the idea that Will would be this, like, not extremely violent. He definitely wouldn't, been, wouldn't have been, like, Ares children levels of violent. But he's never really been violent at all. So that now brings us to the sun and the star. Now, of course... Like I said, I think I said it, 
The reason I'm making this rant specifically is because of one I made previously that I talked about Will too much in because I'd come to a lot of realizations, I think. So in The Sun and the Star, Will is obviously nervous, he's more anxious because, you know, he's going to this place he doesn't really understand and that's a whole plot point. But like I said before, people hoped Will wouldn't be the stereotypical child of Apollo, which he was. See, this is the thing now. Will wasn't ever before Trials of Apollo this obviously child of Apollo child. Obviously, Will Nico stated previously that, you know, he looked like it. But, you know, that's one thing. But then he had the personality of what you'd expect a child of the son would do. But then, like I said before, Will's always been this, like, kind character so like i said before will's always been this more sweet character who you'd expect to be a child of apollo the, like i said the biggest change would have been in the lost hero but will didn't really have his footing yet and you know we didn't even know if he was be a full character i don't even think rick knew if will would be a full character probably wasn't supposed to be but the sun and the star doesn't change that personality of will much and if anything it gets rid of it because this even if you don't say that Will was always this kind of similar child, right, of Apollo. In Trials of Apollo, you can't doubt that he was very stereotypical of what you'd expect a child of Apollo to be like. But the thing is, the Sun and the Star tries to get him out of that. So if anyone complains about Will being so weird, it just doesn't make sense to me. Because the thing is, the whole plot, like Will's whole like story, was starting off not understanding the underworld and being extremely like dismissive of it and not really he was he was ignorant and do you know what the thing is wills had this bad trait of being ignorant before in the lost hero because like i said will was the a's in the lost hero he was easily agitated and annoyed and ignorance would relate to that because you know things would annoy him and he wouldn't acknowledge that it was upsetting to nico so even with this whole different personality he had in The Lost Hero, it still relates. So the thing is, Will does have a different personality even at the start. He's not just this cookie cutter stereotypical child of Apollo. But even if you still want to say that he is, like I say, said before, the whole point of Will's story is to let the... I don't remember how they put it. But it was like, Will's always been this person who's always been, you know, kind, sweet, all the good things of what you'd expect of a child of Apollo. But that's the thing, he always was what you expected because that's the point. He did what he thought he was supposed to. And then at the end of the story, or towards the end, he lets this darkness into him. That's kind of the point. I, I hate the way they word it. I think it's extremely cringy, but it's not. It's a middle schooler's book. They kind of got to be obvious with it. So that's the thing. Will's similar throughout all the books he's in. They all kind of click in one way or another even though they're massively apart. Because The Lost Hero came out like years and years and years before uh, The Sun and the Star did. And yet they still relate. And then you know like all the books that Will's in are similar to each other. He's, his personality is similar. But I don't think people realise that. And the funniest part of it is since Wills had all these expectations put on him by fans, it relates to his character because that's Wills' problem. He has these expectations that he's brought upon himself. He thinks he needs to be able to heal people or he's worthless as a child of Apollo. He has extremely bad anxiety. So my point is, Wills been the same character and he's never been different. He hasn't been mischaracterized for two reasons. One, people tend to ignore his character. So if you are the type to ignore Will's character, then he can't be mischaracterized because he didn't have one. But if you listen to my explanation and the way his character links throughout all the books, then he's not mischaracterized. Now, other characters are. I can completely admit that other characters are definitely mischaracterized, but Will just isn't and I don't think people realize that. Now the only thing that would dismiss some of my points, it, my, all my points are still the same but it would kind of bring up, it would kind of fight the mischaracterization is 
this stupid little book called Camp Half-Blood Confidential. Now, I have my problems with this book, but none of them are like serious. It's a stupid reason, but I, th I don't like how in that book everyone gets like a little description of themselves as long as they were featured, even characters who have never been brought up before and never been brought up after. They all get their little description of what they look like, what their personality is, and Will isn't in it. <laughs> That's the only reason I have my little gripes with that book, but I know it's not supposed to be serious, so it's okay. But the thing is, in that book, Will obviously has little scenes like at the beginning with his dad making, you know, the little video and whatever, but I'm dismissing that because obviously he was embarrassed because anyone would be, no matter if your father's a god or not. But later on in the book, Will gets into a race. Now, some people are, I don't know if Will was one of the ones who agreed automatically or if he was one of the ones who had to kind of be pushed into it. But the thing is, he was in a race with Hermes' children, right? And Hermes' children are extremely swift. Now, the thing is, maybe they could have picked someone who wasn't, but I don't think... I think being swift is like a characterization throughout all of the Hermes' children. But if it's not, then you can dismiss this. You can just ignore this. But my point is, Will was in a race with people who were much faster than him, and yet Will was still described as being quick and clever, but the thing is, the only reason this book wouldn't relate to this one in the start is because Will's kind of neither of these things. Of course, he was nervous, he was anxious because he was going to Tartarus, but he didn't think at all and he just wasn't quick on his feet. Those were the two issues. But the thing is, Camp half Book Confidential was kind of just like a, you know, a little book to have a little fun between the series. So that one, you don't have to take that too seriously. If you want to, you can. But I just wanted to point out that that's the only thing that kind of is different. But like I stated before and like I'm stating again, Will hasn't been mischaracterized at all. He just, he's just not been in enough books to remember his personality and he hasn't been important enough to look at it. Now, of course, I have my obsessions with Will, so I've looked into this and I've thought about it. But like I stated, the books all connect to each other and I'll just do a quick TLDR, too long, didn't read. The Battle of the Labyrinth relates closer to the Trials of Apollo and Blood of Olympus book, as well as The Sun and the Star. And The Lost Hero doesn't really relate to any of the other five. One, two, three, four, no. One, two, three, no. The, <laughs> I counted wrong. The Lost Hero doesn't relate to the other two, three, four, but it still does link with The Sun and the Star in Will's Ignorance. So all the books do relate to each other. So The Lost Hero doesn't really relate to the other th four, but it does relate to The Sun and the Star. Now I've been going on for about 25 minutes. Now this might be a bit shorter if I do cut some things, but I don't know if I will. So I hope you do kind of get what I'm trying to say, which is Will's never been mischaracterized because he was either A, not a character, or be similar to the other five books he was in fact in, not counting Kappa, Blood Confidential. Uh, if you want to correct me on anything, you can. I don't think I got anything wrong, but of course, I even though I have I've, I'm a Will obsessed fucking nerd, I still could have gotten something wrong, even with the other characters like Leo or Annabeth. And if I said anything wrong, just correct me. But I had fun ranting about this, and I will post both the rants that I was talking about eventually. Bye.